In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a port forward rule for one of our premium port forward cameras. I'll be using a hike vision in this example. So once you've connected the camera to the network and you've been able to access the GUI for the camera, which you can do by using one of the camera scan tools that you can find on the website of the camera manufacturer, you'll be first given a DHCP uh, IP address for the camera. Once you've found that and you've navigated to the camera and logged in, so you've set an admin password, you'll want to navigate to configuration in the camera. So you go to configuration, network, and then basic settings. And in here, if you haven't configured a static IP address, you'll have DHCP selected. So we always recommend for port forwarding that you use a static IP address as if you use DHCP and it, for whatever reason the camera's IP changes at some point, you will lose that port forward rule because it won't be applying to the current IP address of the camera. So we would recommend you uncheck DHCP, select an IP that is not in use. You can check by clicking the test button for Hike Vision. But yes, just select one that's not in use. Typically the one that was assigned to it by DHCP is fine. So you can just uncheck this and then leave it at the one it was selected. But if you want to do a more uh, ordered uh, approach where each camera is going to be, you know, dot 14, dot 15, dot 16, et cetera, just make sure that none of them are in use. Uh, next, you just can configure your DNS servers here. It's always recommended and we, we recommend the Google DNS servers. Okay. So once you've set a static IP address, uh, something to note is this port tab here. Uh, in this example, I'm going to leave the RTSP and the HTTP ports at default. The reason for this is in my uh, router, I'm able to use internal and external ports. So this simplifies in a lot of cases, if you're just deploying a, a number of cameras and you don't want to go into each individual camera and configure the different ports, you can leave them at default and just configure an external uh, port. And I'll show you how that works. But if for whatever reason you don't want to do that, you can change the port here. So for in the example, I'm going to be using these ports. So I would just do this and I'll show you the differences when you're doing the rule. But for now, I'll leave this default and then I'm going to navigate over to my router. Uh, you, every router is different. So it is recommended that you go to portforward.com and find your manufacturer and router model in here. And there will be guides on how to do port forwarding. So once you've gotten that and you're in your router and you navigate to the port forwarding section. So I've already set up port forward rules for the camera that we're using. Uh, so I'll just go into manage, but if you haven't done that, you would just hit add rule and you would go through the same process. So you would see a few options in your router. It won't always be the same, but basically you want to name it. I didn't select the application, but you, typically this won't be required. You just want to name it. Uh, the protocol, you want to make sure you set TCP slash UDP. It'll be sometimes default to one of the two. Just make sure you select both. And as I mentioned before, this is going to be my public port. So this is the port that we're going to use. But as I mentioned, you can leave the port at default. So this is a private port. Uh, now, for whatever reason, if you didn't do that, you change it on the camera as well. You would just put it to the same as the public port. So for this example, I'm not going to do that. But yes, if you did decide to change it on the camera, you would just do the same port here. Uh, and then this is, of course, going to be the IP address of the camera. So the static IP address you, you set. And then you would want to say uh, any or and then rules set to on, obviously. This is going to be different on each router, but basically these are the primary things you want to change. And you just hit apply. And then you would do the same thing for your HTTP rule as well. So you have the name, TCP slash UDP, uh, then the external port, internal port. If you're using the same one, just put this as the same. Uh, and then... IP address should be the same as the camera. Again, leave these things done. So once you save that, uh, your camera should be port forwarded. Uh, a good way to double check though that that worked is you go to openportchecktool.com or it's called yougetsignal.com. Uh, just search in Google for port checker. And once you find this page here, you can, uh, it'll auto detect your, your IP address and you can just put in the port that you forwarded. So in this case, I did 8001 for uh, for the HTTP and for the RTSP, I did 5541. You can see both of those were open. 
if you find that the ports are shown to be closed, then you'll need to do some troubleshooting. Um, the first thing to check is that your camera is still powered on. Sometimes the cameras get powered off at some point during this process if you've done something and taken it off a switch or something. So just make sure that the camera has power because that will show the port is closed. Uh, once you know that the camera is powered up and you've done this test and it's still showed to be closed, then you'll need to do some more troubleshooting. So there's a wide variety of things that could be could be happening. It depends on the complexity of the network you're on. Uh, so some things to check would be, are you on a, a router that is connected to a modem that is not in bridge mode or is there, an, in, is there multiple subnets? So you have to make sure that the gateway that you did the port forwarding on is the same gateway as the modem that has external access. So for example, if you have a router that's on a gateway of 192.168.1.1, and the modem is on 192.168.0.1, then it wouldn't work. Uh, you would need to either change the router to be on the same gateway as the modem, uh, put the modem into bridge mode, or do an additional port forward rule on the modem. And keep in mind, if you did an additional port forward rule on the modem, you wouldn't be port forwarding it to the IP address of the camera, it would be to the gateway of the router. So like the IP address of the router. So in like the example I gave, the 192.168.1.1 is where you would port forward the 8001 and the 5541.